it's a challenge. I mean, it, it's, it's a challenge and there's different ways to go about it. Some people have some boots on the ground. Some people say, Hey, I'll figure it out as I go along, which isn't the worst answer in the world. But at some point you do have to have like a basic game plan to take the properties down. So it's, you can do the whole thing virtually, but understanding people are going to ask you that question a lot more than one time. They're going to do it yeah. over and over. And it's like, I don't know about you, but it's like, you can't lie to them every time and you say, listen, you know, I'm bouncing around. Let me, what, if you can get someone to a number on a property, you can do some serious damage. The problem is you got to go through X amount of leads. This business is already challenging as it is because you got to deal with local people. And so you have to have like a massive amount of quantity. Most people who do the virtual, they're looking for people that just have high motivating factors. They put them under contract and then they're going to sell them to like a local investor. So they never have to leave their beautiful place in Canada, which I don't blame you. What's the, what's the temperature there right now? Oh, uh, is that a, is that like a hoodie you have on? Well, it got a little chilly. We actually hate them if they were done. So that's why I want to wholesale so we can get the fuck out of here. But, um, yeah. I don't know how to keep these conversations going. Do I need to vet my cash buyer before I even start so that I have someone there? Like, I don't know how to. So I think you just need to go back to free and, and take a little bit more time there because honestly, I got 20 years of experience in there is I get it. You're doing the virtual model. You have to find a highly motivated people, put them under contract, and then you're going to possibly have to use some boots on the ground to verify some of the conditions of the property. The biggest challenge with virtual markets is you think you could have a wonderful, like incredible deal only to find out it needs massive renovations and they didn't tell you about it and you can't physically see this stuff over the phone. And we have a lot of that. I do virtual markets. I do four of them. Okay. Get the same thing. I'm like, Oh my God. I go, I can't believe you got that price. And then finally the cash buyers are all struggling with me. I hire someone to go take pictures, look at the property. I find out what the pr problem is instantly. They didn't tell us it had 60 grand of damage in the property. They're like, yeah, it's normal. I go, no, the whole property's trashed. I looked at the pictures. Nobody wants to buy it. And that's the biggest problem you're going to have with it. So you can hire local people to do it, to take a look at the property. But remember, you have to find highly motivated people to do virtual. That's the only way it works out because I'm not familiar with those local markets and there's got to be a really good spread for me to make it work because nobody can memorize every market. I could not go to Canada and figure out how to buy a house if you threw it at me. You yeah. guys, you, everything's different there. So on average, any market you dive into, you have no experience, it's going to take you 90 days to even get familiar with it. That's just how it works. Even me, 20 years experience, it takes me 90 days just to even get to a break even profitable level. So understanding it's going to take you some time. You've already found some of the challenges. So now you have to figure out in how you speak with your customers, how you're going to overcome some of these objections. But you've got to understand up first, you have to buy from highly motivated people. A lot of people in your situation, they'll only buy what we call the lowest hanging fruit. You know what I mean? You ever go to a fruit tree and that one branch is bending all the way over and the fruit's almost touching the ground? People mm -hmm. take that because it's easiest and the ripest. That's how most people start with virtual marketing. Why? Because people with the most motivation, they give you the least amount of problems to sell the property. The minute somebody wants to dive into Brit and find, okay, Brit, where do you live? When are you coming to see me? No one stopped by to take pictures of the house. What's going on? they become problematic in virtual market, uh, virtual investing. And you're not the only one person. I have this exact same problem all the time. Whenever I enter a new market, I have to wait. I have to find someone that will, I can trust to take pictures, <coughs> occasionally help me out with uh, new cash buyers. And uh, it's a pain in the butt. I'm not going to lie to you, but once you figure it out, it's fun, but it's three months. So how long have you been doing this for now? I've been watching First, videos and I joined a course in February. So I'm like, okay. finally, I can't watch any more videos. I have no, to. You just can't. Start. You just got to like, so you got to start talking to people. So the reality is if you want to stay in Canada, what you're doing with having very limited boots on the crown, eventually you're going to have to find someone that can help you if you get a really good deal. So if you got a deal tomorrow that say was 70 cents on the dollar, what would you do? Like they gave you a great deal. They're like, yeah, Brett, like I'm ready. Let's go. Let's get rid of this thing. Well, today I looked up how to hire a veteran, but like, I, yeah, I don't know, like the best. 
I would look for cash buyers and try to get one in that inspection period. But uh, yeah, I don't. yeah, you, you would you you would find someone within fifty to hundred bucks to help you out, and you just yeah. you would have to f take the first three three people that called you and just take a risk with them because if not, yeah. you're going to get nothing. And that's how most first people start out with like virtual markets. And then they find some people they trust. They find some people that weren't very good to you and you just move forward. There's no way to start a virtual market and be successful at like in the first month. I Every now and then someone gets lucky, but the, the, the numbers are against you when you do that. So you just got to kind of reformulate your strategy and figure out how you want to do it. How did you pick up? How did you uh, pick the Milwaukee market? Um. I tried I to use, I think, PropStream from a previous coach okay. and kind of so, looked at that. And then I started committing to it. So I thought I should try. Okay. <laughs> so the beauty of having a virtual market is you can pick which market you want to go to. You have the choice to go wherever you want. Now, you're not living in that market, but you want to make money in that market. So you want to find the most profitable markets. So my son just did a video, I think, two days ago on the most profitable markets. You can go back and yeah. check that. I know, I know you don't want to watch videos. The other way to do it is a technique I show you how to piggyback on wholesalers with huge egos and just get on the cash buyers list and find out where they're having success and piggyback because it works out. Think about this. Say you decided to, um, I don't know, attack Oklahoma City. I, I have I have no idea about Oklahoma City. I'm not giving you a suggestion. Yeah. But say you go there, you found uh, two or three people having massive success and you found out that like they're, they're all getting properties in the same three zip codes. Well, then you could target your market towards there, find these people, and then if you get it on a contract, guess who you get to sell it to? You just sell it to the other wholesalers. I did that for like the longest time when I couldn't figure out how to do virtual marketing. Just let other people point you to the money and, and take advantage of their egos. Do not spend money trying to figure out markets that you know nothing about. And that's the other challenge is if you're going to pick a virtual market, try to pick the one where you think you're going to have the most success, either somewhere you've you've visited or maybe you've had family with or try to find someone else that's having success today, not three, not six months ago today. Then find the areas that they're having success and go attack them. If you're going to cold call them, if you're going to mail to them, if you're going to SMS them and kind of go from there, I'm giving you. All the stuff's in freewholesaling.com, but I'm trying to give you ideas to do it. So you're, yeah. you're young. It's not too cold yet. Your brain hasn't froze yet. So I like your glasses too, by the way. Oh, thanks. So, so it's, I can find deals and sell them to other wholesalers. What about the ones that have already gotten them under contract and there's a big spread? Can I piggyback that way or it's not that easy to do? It's a little bit harder, but like if you can go into an area where wholesalers are having success, you can put it under contract. Dude, they'll they'll buy they they will get your deal. They have a huge extensive network of cash buyers. Mm -hmm. You guys, for the first two years, all I did was sell my stuff to wholesalers because I okay. didn't I didn't know what I was doing. I was like, well, I might as well take ten grand and learn the business and keep surviving. You will never get killed taking a profit, and sometimes yeah. you do that as you're learning and going forward. Listen, you're young, you're learning. Uh, what attracts you to wholesaling? Oh, the freedom and the mobility and flexibility. Like, okay. I can't believe this so job exists. You, you got to be willing to pay a little bit of a price for it. It's not terrible, but I've already told it. If you give two years, 24 months, okay. it will change the complete trajectory of your life. I've already proven to you with mm -hmm. a 17-year-old kid. I have 19-year-olds, 18-year-olds. I've taught it's the same thing. This business isn't about how smart you are. It's like how effective you work. And what I love about this, this isn't really even a sales business. You just go find people. You got to learn to talk to people and really connect with them and then solve a problem. If you can do that, you can make an amazing amount of money. The first two years, everybody goes through like, yeah, how do I do this? It is more challenging. I'll be brutally honest. It is more challenging to do a virtual market from scratch with no experience because there's a lot of obstacles. You just got to overcome them one at a time, not try to go... God, this is overwhelming. I'm going to quit. Like, this isn't yeah. worth it. You got to think back and go, okay, what the heck did I do this for? I didn't figure this stuff out till I was like 33. I didn't even get going until I was 35. And I had a mortgage. I had two hungry kids and a wife looking at me like, how the hell are you going to make this work? Yeah. And you now maybe I was more motivated for that. Like maybe just sometimes you just go, hey, listen, I, I'm going to eat like mac and cheese till I figure this out. Don't do that. But I'm just telling you, you've got to like push yourself to do this stuff. 
I understand just two years, 24 months, it goes by fast. When you get older guys, it goes even faster. So enjoy the journey. It's a pain in the butt, but like when you, when you overcome it, it's like the best feeling in the world. And then you can give back to your family, whatever you decide to do, you go on trips all over the world and do whatever you want. Cause you can operate this business mm -hmm. from anywhere. If you can figure it out now, you can do it anywhere. And honestly, you could pick one virtual market and have a success. You could do two or three. And, um, I have someone I taught this business about three years ago. Um, super guy out of, uh, I think he is, uh, it's not San Diego. I think it's like long beach or something. And he does somewhere all the way down in the South. And we have conversations. I, I just can't believe how much money the guy's making. And like he was doing the same conversation. You were the exact same conversation. I'm just like, I told okay. him, I go, you're going to, you're going to be a beast one day. Just, and he struggled horribly his first six months. And okay. then around seven, eighth month, he's like, Hey, I figured it out. I go, I told you to take three months. He's like, yeah, I didn't believe you though. I'm like, okay. So you experience it. So you got to go through the journey. I would yeah. spend more time in freewholesaling.com and then I would research the markets you want to penetrate because you, you can go anywhere you want. So you might as well pick the most effective one. Find another wholesaler having success that can't stop bragging, get on their cash buyers list. And in 48 hours, you'll figure out exactly where the best deals are being harvested today. And then you make a decision if you want to go and attack in that market. Okay. Okay. So I'm glad you pulled over and nobody got killed. Thank you. <laughs> Can I ask one more? Yeah, shoot. Realtors, when they're like, what are you looking for? I'd love to help you. Do I just say, oh, well, I'm actually a wholesaler. So do you work with wholesalers? Like, how do I? Okay. So if you're going to work with a realtor, lose the word wholesaler. Okay. Because they all have a preconceived notion of how you're going to screw them. Yeah. All realtors here. Let, listen, this is a true story. Any type of realtor school that realtors go through, um, they're taught to be realtors. Like I don't blame them. Like, and yeah. so when it when it comes to like, all realty contracts have a section in it because they're approved by each state and their uh, the bar association. Is this contract assignable or not? Like, there's different variations of it. Do you know in every almost 90% of the realtor schools, all the instructors teach them, make sure you never have an assignable contract because you wind up and get a wholesaler and your life's going to be hell. That's what they tell them. So the minute you go, Hey, I'm a wholesaler. Like, Oh God, this is the person they told me about in school. I need to avoid. Yeah. So don't give them a preconceived notion. I buy houses for cash. And here's what I do with realtors. If you ever have a house you come across and it's just, it's funky, like meaning it's going to need repairs and you need to get it up. Give me a call because I have a way where I can actually buy that house and pay you your full commissions. Let me know if that's something of interest. You don't need to call me every day. You don't even have to call me every month. Just call me when it comes up and give me a chance and I'll pay you your full commissions. All they want to hear is that you're going to pay them. So many investors waste realtors time. Yeah, I did. I did it a little bit in the beginning, so I'm guilty of it too. Now I have a complete different perspective because I get a lot of deals from realtors. I'm very respectful of the time. There is a time and place for everything. If you go to a realtor and try to explain why you're a kick-ass wholesaler and why you have to learn how to wholesalers work, they, they just, they don't care. Hey. What, what's in it for me? That's all they care about, right? That's what most people are. This is the reality. So give them what they want. I'm going to pay your commissions. Find a property that you can't sell that needs some love. And if we can strike a deal, I will pay cash for it and pay you your full commissions. They typically go like this. Well, Britt, if you fix it up, can I relist it? Mm -hmm. Let's let's do a deal and let's see how that works out. I can't promise that, but I promise to pay you your full commissions. The minute you commit to that, they will beat you to a pulp. And I go, if you behave and you can get me a buyer that will pay full price, I will I 100% I, I would do that. And that's it. I never give them an exclusive listing because I want everyone to go fight and give me the best price for the property. But remember, that's why we go to retail. We're talking about wholesaling. So typically you're going to buy the property, make sure the realtor gets paid their full commission. And then you, you harvest your profit and then everybody's happy. And that's how you do it. Do not tell the realtor I'm a wholesaler because they're just going to, they're going to discount you immediately. Yeah. Worst case scenario, if they ask what you do, it's like, I'm a person who buys houses for cash. You ever met someone like that? Yeah. And they're going to, yeah, I have it. I go, no, I, I, I thought you guys were like a, an anomaly. I didn't even know you guys existed. It's amazing. So. Um, so if I that, pay the closing costs, is that something I would actually like pay out of my assignment fee or that would be the buyers? Like, how does that? Yeah. So, um, so say you're buying a house for a hundred thousand us dollars 
and say the realtor gets 3%, okay? And then say you're selling that property for 115 or 120, okay? By mm -hmm. the way, it's all wide open negotiable. Like you can push the realtor fee on your new buyer, but the reality is you typically absorb it. So um, whatever I'm going to pay the realtor, I'm just going to add to my in fee anyways. So if I'm thinking sell at 115 and I got to pay a $3,000 commission, I'm going to sell it for 118 because technically I didn't pay for the realtor when it comes down to it. Okay. Do you see what I'm getting? So yes, yeah. it would be your expense, but the reality is you're just going to push the price up a little bit more and you're you'll have no problem getting it. Sometimes you're making such stupid spreads. Like who cares if you pay a realtor two or three grand, if you made 30 grand would two or three grand stop you. No, it stops most people in this business. I'm here to tell you, I get, I get probably 15, 20 deals a year from realtors based on that conversation. I just told you because I tell them I pay them their full commission and I never question them. So even if I'm only making three or $4,000, I make sure they're paid, but sometimes I make 50, 60 grand and I make sure they're always paid. Yeah. If you take care of your realtors, they'll come back to you. The reality is most wholesalers are pretty abusive with realtors oh. and we have this tumultuous relationship and you just have to approach it a little bit differently. I don't want a realtor. I don't need them calling me every day because they call you every day after like a month or two. They just, they go, Oh man, Britt just wasted my time. Okay. She's, she's, she's full of it. I say, listen, just call me with the problem properties. The ones that look bad that you don't want to walk into or like they need a lot of repair and they won't do it or the ones you physically can't sell. You just can't sell. But those are hard too. I don't, I don't want to, they, they usually don't sell because they want top dollar. So. So when you're at closing and they find out that you're a wholesaler, isn't that almost worse? Like, you know what I'm saying? If I can prevent that from being like, oh, you didn't tell me that you were going to assign this, is that... It, it doesn't really matter at that. So the only person that's ever going to call you to the table on it is the seller. And we tell every seller up front, which I teach you in freewholesaling.com is I'm buying this property to make a profit. Yeah. That's what I do for a Once you disclose that up front, they, they just, they can't have an issue with you. Okay. Right. Yeah. Honestly, you guys, everybody on this live, you all think the seller is going to have an issue with you. I'm here to tell you they want their problem solved for this set price. If you can do it, and you disclose that to them, they're never going to have a problem with you. I've done this so many times. Honestly, I have a lot of them say, because I hope you make $100,000. Like I've had some like with crazy statements, you guys make it an issue because you feel like it's, it's like something wrong and we should be making money from these people. Honestly, if you're solving a problem, who cares? They don't come back. And if they do talk to them about it, right? I listen. If you buy a piece of bread from the store, do you ask them how much they bought the bread for? No. You just buy no, the bread God. because it's a good value, right? I'm just telling you, I have only been called maybe twice in my entire career on an assignment fee. And in both, I explain my way out of it. And the explanation, if you do it up front, it's usually never, ever a problem. Occasionally, a realtor throws their two cents in there, but I'm not worried about that. So, Okay, Britt.